What's happening fam? Jay Sinister back again to hit you with another video. And today we're gonna to be installing one of these two items that you see right here on that EXP 1 5th scale Creighton. So we have a lot of things to do. We have the roller, so we have to install the guts. All right, the hearts and the brain, or should I say the heart and the brain of the system. But we're gonna focus on one piece today and move on to the second piece at another day. So without any further ado, I can't talk anymore because I'm accumulating bills right now. My debt is through the ceiling because I haven't rolled that intro footage. As always, thanks again for coming back. You know I appreciate each and every one of you because without you, I couldn't do any of this what I'm doing now. And this, your commitment, your subscriptions, your comments drives me to do more. So let's jump into what we're gonna be doing. I gave a quick overview. Got the EXP crate and roller. You saw the stop motion video I did before of the unboxing, a quasi, you know, pseudo unboxing. If you have not seen that video, pop the link up or a card up now so you can go check it out. It's pretty cool. You'll see more stop motion videos in the future as I get better at it. But today we're gonna to focus not on the Castle XLX2. Now I know there is a service warning out on this XLS2, excuse me, XLX2. If you haven't went out to the website, check it out. This is a, has been a fire hazard, but I believe with the firmware, you can correct that. And if you feel that yours still has a problem, you can always send it in for service to Castle. So we're gonna put this to the side, and what we're gonna focus on today is simply installing the servo to the EXP rollers. All right, Savox, Sierra Whiskey-0241 Mike Golf. That's the SW0241MG. 7.4 volt Savox servo. And this is a servo made specifically for one fifth scale vehicles. Did my research, it is waterproof. And this is the one I'm gonna go with. So here's a quick look at the servo. Pretty big, it's a digital servo. It's got some size to it. I'm gonna weigh it in a second, but we'll put that to the side. A few of the other things you get in the box, your standard servo arms, you can use this on a bunch of different uh, types of vehicles. Get some adapters in this bag, plus, the obligatory and complimentary Savox stickers. So let's get a quick weight on this servo. Use our little scale here. And total gram weight. Now this is the gram weight of the servo. We're looking at about 190.33 grams. So that's our weight for the servo. We're gonna install this into the EXP crate and roller. It's gonna be a simple install. There's not a lot to it. Of course, we gotta follow the instructions, but these are for those who need that little extra help. These, as in this video, for those individuals who like to see things being installed so they can better learn and understand how to install it. So it may be a little long, and I'm not apologizing for that. I'm not making it for the seasoned veteran. You know, the seasoned veteran may wanna take a look at this, just get a little brush up. Hey, it is what it is, but this is for the cats like myself who like to take their time and need visual as well as written instructions in order to do things. And then, you know, after that, you'll figure it out on your own. One other thing that you may not have figured out or may have seen, Jason's production stickers. We got the JSP stickers, but you may have said to yourself, um, I can't wear that. I'd like to wear some JSP gear. Say no more. I now have some JSP, these are the version one t-shirts on my site for sale. All right, this is the white t-shirt. Very plain, very simple. Got a smaller JSP logo crest over the left breast. And on the rear, we've got a larger JSP logo, very simple, very sleek. Put it with everything. This white goes with everything. And on me, I have the black JSP t-shirt and it has my quote that I use at the end of all my videos, exiting stage left. And on the back as a shout out to my man, R V 
D, we got the JSP logo on the back in black. Very classic black t-shirt. Both shirts and a few of the items are on sale at my site. I'll leave a link up either now or in the description below. If you wanna buy, hey, go right ahead. No pressure, all proceeds, any profit that I make from the sale of these shirts go right back into JSP and that helps me procure new items, free giveaway items, maintenance on all of my equipment and other things down the road. This is not for me to get, uh, get rich. I'm not trying to take all your money, but I'm just offering my spot out there with a little JSP swag to go along with the free stickers that I give out. So enough talk, let's move over to the bench, open this box and get the crate out. And I've been dying to take a look at it and put this servo in. All right, fam, we're now back at the bench. Got some room just to do this install of the servo. I did fail to mention, I'm also gonna do a, uh, an install. Well, just put this in the box, the receiver that I'm gonna use uh, for my Flysky Noble. And that is the, and it's gonna be, let me see if I can get that in. You've seen it before, if not, here it is. This is the FGR4. V2 for the Flysky. This is a larger version of the FGR 4 series. The FGR 4S is smaller and it has an internal antenna, whereas this one is larger and has the external antenna. So I'm going to install also this receiver into the receiver box along with the servo. Okay, so we put this, the receiver away for now because we're not going to uh, get too far ahead of ourselves in this install. So Everything we're going to need to do the install of the receiver box and the servo starts, of course, with the servo that we're going to use, and that's the Savox Sierra Whiskey-0241 Mike Golf, that's Metal Gear SW-0241, uh, one-fifth scale servo, so we're going to use that. And to install that one-fifth uh, scale servo, Arma has given us multiple options for servo installs in this particular vehicle, and that is the one-fifth scale Creighton EXB roller. So we have two boxes. All right, and you ask yourself, well, why do we have two boxes? Many of you already know this. For those that don't, here's the answer. You can put a one-sixth or a one-fifth scale type servo in this vehicle, and you get two boxes for that. And if you look closely, let me get a focus here, best I can with the lighting. If you look closely down in the corner, and if this does not come out right, there's a little number right here. Hard for you to see, I understand. But this number tells you which servo box we have. And in this case, this has a six on it, and this is for a sixth scale type servo. And you can always use the old eyeball test, and you'll notice right off the bat that this servo does not fit. Okay, it's too wide to fit within these dimensions right here. It just won't go. So we have the next receiver box servo mount. And if we look down in the corner again, we see a five. This is your fifth scale servo box. And if we take our fifth scale servo, and now you'll notice that we slide it right in place and it fits. Now this is, I don't have it in the right way. I'm just throwing it in just to show you that this fits in this fifth scale servo and receiver box mount. Okay, so you get two of those and that's how you know which one to use. So the sixth scale servo box, we're gonna to toss to the side because we don't need it and we'll stay focused on the fifth scale servo box. Okay, so we've got the servo and the servo box out of the way and the next thing we have that is provided to us is a bag of goodies. And this bag contains things like your antenna wire, your waterproof uh, gasket seal for your servo, excuse me, your receiver box, uh, different foam gaskets, some inserts and spacers, and all of the fasteners that you'll need to perform this install. Outside of that, you just need your tools. Everyone's got those. So if you do, you're ready up. Let's go ahead and do this quick, simple, easy servo and receiver install. Okay, so the next step, very simple, very easy, very self-explanatory. We're gonna take our, in this case, since we're installing a one-fifth scale servo, we're gonna take our one-fifth scale receiver and servo box mount. And remember, if you look down in the corner, there's a number here. I'm gonna show that again as best I can with my focus. There's a small number here that says has a five 
fifth scale. That's what we're going to use. So now we're going to take our servo in this position. Make sure that you don't get your wire kinked when you install this. And when you install it, you want it to look just like this. Now you see how we have the actual servo, the, the gear portion of the servo right here. That is next to this side of the box. This little uh, oblong type shaped piece here. That's where you want the, you don't want it like this. It will fit. Okay, it does fit. But your metal, your gear portion here is on the wrong side of the box, all right? So you just want to make sure you have it flipped around just like this. Here's a little closer look without getting out of focus. So our gear is next to this raised portion here on the box and our wire is neat and out of the side. Fits perfectly. Now. The next portion of this is to, in, we want to secure this servo to the box. And what we're going to use are four M4 by 16 millimeter cap head screws. And that are these right here. Let me focus in on them. All right, M4 by 16 millimeter cap head screws. And ironically enough, we're going to use a 3.0 millimeter hex head wrench or screwdriver to install. And there it is. In addition to those four cap head screws, you also have four of these spacers right here. Sorry again, it's hard to focus on these small items. I'm doing the best I can. Let me get my hand in there. Maybe you'll see it better. Focus. There we go. And four of these. All right. And to install those, what you're going to do is you have four corresponding holes on the servo and servo mount, two on each of the sides. You want to take one of the spacers, slide that into your servo like so. I think you can see that here. This is one of the spacers. I'll push that up a little bit. All right, spacers in there. And I'm just going to do one on camera. I'll do the other four off. And you want to just simply Screw in. All right, fam, we're locked in and secure. We have all four of our fasteners screwed in and tight. I did fail to mention this. Just like when you're putting wheels on a real vehicle or installing your wheels and tires on your RC, you know, you want to tighten them down in a star pattern. You want to do the similar thing here. You want to go from corner to opposite corner, across, and then back to opposite corner. That way you're not wrenching down one side and putting too much torque on one side and try to catch the other side up. Do it in that pattern, Installed. you'll be good. good to go. Fine We're going to move on to the next step. And that next step is taking one of these, I'm going to call it a U-shaped foam piece right here. It's a little U-shaped foam piece. And we're going to install that in the housing. And that's going to be at the point where we route our servo wire through. And that's going to be right about here. Let me get in. So if you look here, see this little cutout, this opening right here? Let me get a little better focus. All right, this little cutout opening here, this is where we're going to route that wire through to the inside of the box, which is going to plug into our receiver. So we take the little U-shaped gasket, and it might be simpler if you run the gasket around the wire first. All right. And then insert it into that uh, cavity. And that should make it a lot simpler to do this port part of the install. And... Voila, viola or voila, however you want to say it. We've got the servo wire routed inside of where the receiver will go. And this is the receiver box portion. Pretty much done with that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Time to move on to the next step. All right, fam, the next step was so simple. I just went ahead and did it off camera and I'm going to show you the end result. So we've already put the re uh, servo in. Piece of cake, 
four screws, we're done. And next, whatever receiver of your choice, that's what you're gonna put in this side. And I just used my mounting option. I'm a fan of this Gorilla Tape. It's good stuff, it's clear, and it's pretty much permanent. When it sticks, it's stuck. So I just took the clear, uh, the clear Gorilla Tape, double-sided of course, uh, cut it to fit my specific receiver. Again, I'm using the Flysky FGR4 version two. Put the tape on the reverse, found a perfect spot inside the box. I didn't want it too far or too close to the back edge. I'm just calling this the back edge because I wanted enough of the uh, antenna wire that I could pull through, mounted it down, ran the antenna wire through this grommet like we did for the servo. See this little foam piece that I have, it's inserted down here, just like we did the servo wire. We put this little foam gasket in, run our receiver wire through that gasket, out through the bottom, and then up through the antenna placement, place our antenna over the receiver, and then after that, you take the three, uh, not three millimeter, M3, yes, M3 by three millimeter set screw, use a 1.5, millimeter hex head and you won't be able to see it too very well but down in here you put your set screw in it's right here and that locks your antenna in okay fam so we got part one down look i know it was simple i know it was easy probably didn't warrant any type of video but i did one anyway because I figured someone out there may need just a little bit of assistance to do this. Quick update fam. Again, you know we're doing a current giveaway. We have about a week left. Okay, one week left. Today is the 16th of April. So probably the 23rd, which is probably next Friday or the 24th, Saturday. 24 April, Saturday. We're gonna announce the winners of our most current giveaway and that is for two people to win one of two. T-Bone Racing Mini Portable Ramps, mark your calendars, 24 April. Check me out on Instagram for any updates so you stay in the know about that giveaway. Also, not to beat a dead horse, but if you wanna get some cool tees, all right, this is the back of the white one, comes in different colors. JSP logo over the front breast. I know the lighting is making this look really bad, but there it is. And also the exiting stage left tee, JSP logo on the back. Yo, stick around for the next parts in this series. And as always, I am Jay of Jay Sinister Productions. Exiting. Stage left. Jay Sinister Productions. Jay Sinister Productions.